All right, what's up, guys? Super Newborn One Seven, and uh, it's another episode. Of Practice makes perfect. Don't have a clue what episode it is. Um, I've got I've got footage saved up for like four weeks before this. Uh, if you guys want to see it, uh, leave a leave something in the comments, just saying like old footage or something like that. Uh, <coughs> this whole um, episode, I've got Adam Warrock music going. Uh, quietly behind it. Um, I'll put a track list of the order that I played him in and stuff like that in the description. Um, he's a really cool guy, or well, a really cool, cool artist. I've never met him or anything like that. Um, I would definitely suggest you guys pick him out or check him out. Um, I'm going to be picking one of his songs for uh, my new intro uh, that's going to be coming out next week because uh, I was a little bit ill prepared this week, but uh, it'll be out next week. Uh, as long as I can get get another episode of this out next week. I'm going to try and do this as consistently as possible, guys. But uh, this is I'm doing pretty good in school, so that means I'm working hard. Money! <laughs> but, uh, yeah, here's uh, another episode of the Practice Makes Perfect. Uh, represent ACB8! <laughs> uh, but, yeah, peace. Alright, guys, just got back from the comic book shop. And um, I picked up this uh, one-shot. Um... <laughs> Some of you guys might know about it. Um, it's called Minimum Carnage Alpha. Um, the cover art's by Clayton Crane. Unfortunately, the art on the inside is not. But the art on the inside, it's okay. I mean, I wish it had Clayton, because I think Clayton's a phenomenal artist. He's my favorite. Um, my favorite artist, I would say. Um, but anyway, this is a, a new story. Um, it's, eh. It's okay. It's kind of weird. He's like miniature, and he's got well, he's not miniature. He's got like miniature friends, or well, not friends, but like people that work with him. And um, I don't know. It's okay. He crosses over with Venom, who, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of, and then Scarlet Spider, who um, when I did read it, it was decent. Um, but I'm definitely gonna be picking up the other parts of this. I'm gonna get the entire series regardless. Um, it does continue in where does it say at the very back? Um. The books that it's going to be flowing through are um, part two is in Scarlet Spider 10, so I'm gonna have to pick that up. And then part three is in Venom 26, obviously I would pick that up. Part four is in Scarlet Spider 11, part five is in Venom 27, and then the sixth part, the final part, is going to be in Maximum Carnage Omega, or Minimum Carnage Omega. Um, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of stupid how like. It's a play on it's a play on an old comic how they're calling it Minimum Carnage because like the there was that whole Maximum Carnage series back in the 90s or whatever. Um, now they're calling it Minimum Carnage, but then they actually made people small. And it seems like the entire story is based around like little miniature stuff, so that's kind of dumb. But uh, I don't know, I liked it kind of. Um, Uncanny X Force 32. This was a uh, Mad Good, um, as always, pretty much with this series. Um, a lot of Deadpool stuff. Deadpool is talking a lot, and I liked it. Um, this this has been a decent story arc. I like it. This is the eighth part of the story, I guess. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's coming to an end pretty soon. I can tell. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely a good story. Um, I don't really have much to say on it. Um, and then I also picked up Batman The Dark Knight Volume 1. Um, I'm trying to pick up pretty much all the Batman-related uh, New 52 books, um, like when they come out on trade. Uh, and then I'll decide on whether I want to continue them. I'm definitely going to be getting the regular Batman story when issue 13 comes out, because that's the uh, return of the Joker, and that's the startup for uh, Death of the Family, which is going to be an awesome arc, hopefully. But anyway, this was really, really, really good. To be honest with you guys, I think the first part of this, because this has the first nine issues, and the other ones um, that I've gotten so far only have the first seven issues. Um, so the first story arc was in these first seven issues, and I thought that the first story arc was a lot better than uh, Detective Comics, definitely. Then I even thought it was better than the Court of Owls. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Um, kind of went around uh, this new thing, sort of, kind of like. Well, it's based around uh, 
What's his name? You know what? I'm not even going to go into it much. I'm just going to say it's kind of based around Scarecrow, and then Bane has an appearance, because Bane's kind of like the mastermind. Um, I guess, sort of. Eh, not really, but Bane appears in it, and some other classic Batman stuff, like Batman villains appear in it. Um, I'm not going to talk about this too much, because tomorrow when it's uh, daytime, just so I can get more light, I'm definitely going to be doing a review of this comic book. Um, similar to how Shardimus Prime does his on The Walking Dead, I'm going to be doing one of those. Um, I want to do that for uh, a lot more trade paperbacks. Um, I just, I want to get in the flow of it. I tried to do an entire one for uh, the first Batman, just the regular Batman trade, um, but my camera ended up dying halfway through the review, and also then when I looked back at it, the half that I did have, there, have, there was like glares on the on the pages whenever I tried to show something. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll definitely try again. Um, I think also the setting wasn't right. I was doing it in my room. My room doesn't really have great lighting. I, mean, I, I had that on, I had this on, I had this on, I had my closet light on, I had both of those lights on. Um, but the problem was I was standing over there, so most of the light would then be behind me or like directly above me when the light needs to be behind the camera, if you guys didn't know. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. Uh, I might have to do it in a different room or something. Um, but I want to stay around my stuff, just because that's, that's my channel's about. But anyway, yeah, I'll do a review of this. And I, I mean, I'm going to be shooting it tomorrow. Well, you guys don't even know what day it is anyway. Um, I'm trying to work on, I was trying to work on getting iMovie, um, it actually, we can't get the newest version of iMovie on this computer, um, and you can't download the old version, and this computer was supposed to come with it, but then when it broke, it lost it, so now we're gonna have to go to Best Buy and see if they can somehow get it for us or whatnot, but, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll just say that again, <laughs> Just wanted to show my Bane parts for no particular reason. Oh, and uh, package. So I opened up my sweet ass package, and uh, it's part of it. You got the DCUC Wave 16 Jason Todd uh, loose, um, which is fine. Um, although I am missing his build a figure piece. Um, I also got the Riddler min on card, uh, so that's good. Got the Asbeth min on card, so that's great. Oh, what's this? I have the Dick Grayson Robin Men on Card with his Bane piece. I guess I don't need that Bane piece. What do you know? <laughs> but yeah, this is a cool ass trade I set up. Uh, I got rid of my uh, Soda Blanca, my Dalsim, and my Birdie um, for these four guys. Uh, so. I think I probably got the better end of the deal, but uh, the guy was wanting to get some Soda Street Fighter figs, so uh, I'm really happy to get these guys. Um, about to crack them open, complete my bane. So uh, yeah, it's basically I got five figures technically, I guess, sort of. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. All right, guys. So from this haul, I'd probably have to say that my favorite is uh, this Jason Todd Robin. Um, and I guess really he's not really much better than the other Robin um, the only thing the only reason I like this one better is because his legs are like straighter so it's easier for him to stand and pose around and whatnot so I just like him a little bit more um, and also I do like how he's got that angry look I mean he is Jason Todd so he's gonna whoop some people's asses um, this is just a nice little NSA I set up um, yeah if you guys have seen uh, Batman Under the Red Hood, um, you know, there's a flashback where uh, Jason Todd and Batman are taking on the Riddler. Um, who was it? Fernando put up a dope, dope pick off that. Um, yeah, this really sick kicking pose, and it really made uh, Robin actually look agile. Um, he's using the wrong Robin like a noob, but, uh, you know, it's Fernando. <sighs> Whatever. What are you going to do? Um... Yeah, like I said, I'd probably have to say he's the best. Riddler's probably my uh, probably my least favorite. Um, I, I like the Asriel Batman. I really like his look and whatnot. But uh, the articulation on the elbow joints and the shoulder joints is just really weak. He's got like the Hasbro uh, elbow joints where it like bends and rotates kind of. Um, so the elbow joints as some people call it. Um, so it's kind of weak there. Can't get him into great poses. 
But um, yeah, the Bane's cool. Um, one of my legs has a really loose ankle, um, so that doesn't, it's not great. But uh, you know, I guess I'll probably go over some of them. Um, I, I might do a review of all of them at some point, but um, cause I think I'm gonna try and start getting some reviews up on my channel uh, just to make more stuff, you know. So this is the only comic book that I picked up this week. Um, Batman issue 13. Uh, first part of Death of the Family. It has this cool cover. It's got this Joker part, and then it comes up and you see Batman. Um, it was okay. I didn't love it. Um, eh, I don't know. It, it just didn't excite me very much. But I guess it was decent. Um, I'm going to pick up at least the other Batman parts of this story arc. This runs through a ton of Batman related books. Like this month there was this book. Batgirl 13 and Catwoman 13. Which were both just preludes. So I didn't bother to pick those up. Then next month. Uh, Batman, Batgirl, Catwoman and Suicide Squad. Are all going to be main parts of the story. Like tie ins. Um, and then December. Batman plus Batman and Robin. Detective Comics, Batgirl, Nightwing, Red Hood, Suicide Squad, and Teen Titans. And pretty much the same there. Um, I think maybe one short, I don't even know. Um, and then in February, it's just Batman issue 17 to finish it off. Um, so I'm definitely going to be getting the Batman parts of it. But uh, other than that, meh. We'll see. Actually, I don't even know if those two were out this week. I honestly have no idea. I didn't even see him, but I wasn't really looking. Um, but yeah, like I said, it was just okay for me. Um, I hope it picks up. So this is a little setup I just set up um, with some new dollhouse furniture that I picked up. Uh, we went to this, like, I think it's called a... They call it, like, whatever the town is, toys and hobby shop. Um... But all the toys in there, like for little kids, or they've got like model train sets and stuff like that. But uh, they've got a whole dollhouse section, so um, we were able to get this some dollhouse furniture for not too bad of a price. And we already had uh, some of these, like the, all the stuff on the table we already had. Um, but we got the table, we got four chairs, and then we got one of these cabinets in the back um, on the left. Uh, which actually, let me move that in frame a little bit more. Um, so we already had all the other stuff, but I just set this little scene up. As you can see in the middle, there's a uh, there's this smiling Joker fish, um, and I don't know, you guys can't really see it, but she's holding a, a hand of cards in her in her hand. Um, when I take the picture, it'll probably be a little bit more something like this angle. Um, probably cut out on Batman, um, but uh, right here is good enough for this little little shot right here. Um, I'll probably get a picture for right here too, um, but yeah, I just basically put up some props. It looks like maybe she was uh, killed during breakfast. Um, as you can see, there's banana, orange juice, an orange over there. There's toast on the some of the plates. There's an apple. The third person apparently was drinking Coca-Cola, um, but uh, she's the only one that's here. Um, so yeah, just step your, step your guys' game up, because you guys can get a lot of these props for not horrible prices, like, uh, all these props here. Well, actually, props are pretty expensive for what they are. Like, the table, the four chairs, and the dresser was 30 bucks, and that's probably overpaying, but, uh, we were there, and my mom was buying it, so, uh, I didn't mind. And then all of the little props are kind of expensive, too, like, uh, a little bag of, like, six cans of Coke were, I think... I think the bag said they were like two bucks. My mom had gotten them a long time ago. They were like two bucks for six of those, and then like two bucks for the orange juice thing, two glasses, and then there's one for the different fruits and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, just step you guys' game up. You guys can't really see it all that well, but this is the, uh, what is this? The Ghost Rider movie figure for the Scarecrow here. 
me see if I can get it. There we go, a little bit more light. Um, there's a Marvel Scarecrow character, but uh, I don't have the DC Superhero Scarecrow, and I really want to get him, but until then, I'm probably going to use this guy. Because, I mean, he's got a really nice magical. Get up here. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, see? That head sculpt is real nice. Well, he's got a great sculpt all around. Just a really nice figure, but, uh, yeah, I think he kind of works for a DCUC, uh, or a DC Scarecrow, for now at least. I really want to get the DC Superhero version, though. This towering over Batman. Um, but, yeah. I finally put up the Spider-Man poster. Um, it's not going to stay here for too long. I want to get a Batman poster and probably put it up here, so I just put it up with sticky tack on the back. Uh, you guys can't really see, but there's sticky tack back there. Whereas all those things are up with tape, just because I don't really care. Those things suck anyway, um, except for that one right there. Uh, I signed a uh, print of, what is that even called? That was called Wolverine Vengeance or something like that. It was the book prior to X-Force, or Uncanny X-Force. But uh, yeah, I'm probably going to put this guy up uh, over there, that little thin area. I got the movie Fantastic Four 2 uh, poster right there. Um... But yeah, I want to get a Batman one for up here. Got my little Iron Man one right there. But I'm probably about to do a review on a Batman Dark Knight. So yeah. I know that sometimes we can't see the sunshine Cause all we hear is rain How we live in today, yeah But I believe in the USA And I believe a man can make it in the world today yeah. The dream of America Built on the character Of people fighting and scraping To build entire nations As they slap the pavement Men scrape skies touching the heavens While others would script the stories That our culture was penning And if you never saw it before The golden dreams to the foaming shores How about the nature standing Alright guys, I just picked up Batman and the long Halloween. Well, actually, I didn't just pick it up, but I, I just finished reading it. Um, and this really is one of the best Batman books of all time. It's considered to be like one of the essential stories for Batman. I think it was really, really, really good. Um, I, I just loved it the whole way through. Um, from what I understand, it's sort of supposed to be like in the year one universe, which is like sort of a different universe, if you know what I mean. Because like it's re in year one, they're basically like retelling what Batman did in his first year. This is supposed to be t going on during like his second or third year, sort of, from what I understand, followed by a... Uh, uh, what was that next one called with Robin? Dark Victory, I think they called it. Um, which I want to pick that up soon, too. And I still need to pick up Year One. I've read it before, but I never owned it. Um, it was actually at my comic shop for 15 bucks, but I only had a, only had 30 on me, and this this was 25 so couldn't grab it today. Um, but yeah, like I said, this was mad, bad, mad good. Um, I really enjoyed it. The only thing that I didn't fully enjoy was the art. Um, I don't know. It's It's really good art in a way it's just kind of over stylized for me like uh i think that's part of the reason i really liked uh batman the dark knight volume one of the new 52 like it was really well detailed but it was kind of like really basic at the, well not basic but like it was just like normal art if you know what i mean i don't really know how to explain it um but like i said this was mad good a lot of cool stuff going on a lot of characters intertwined and stuff like that like the good books always are um but yeah, you guys should definitely pick this up. And you should probably don't buy it from like a comic book shop because you're going to be getting it for like 35 bucks because that's that's what they actually sell for from the company here. 25 in the US and uh, 29 in Canada. Um, buy them from like Amazon because I saw on Amazon they had all three books of Nightfall each for I think like 18 bucks a piece. Whereas at my comic, well, used, but at my comic book shop they've got them for. Uh, 35 a piece, I believe. Um, so I'm probably gonna pick up Nightfall just because they're so cheap on there. Um, but yeah, it's actually funny when I was reading this. Uh, it's not even just this. Yesterday I was watching uh the old Batman 90 series. I've been trying to catch up on that, watch it all, and I watched the Mad Hatter episode. And um, in I'm in in school. I'm in a class called acting and directing, um, because I want to be a director when I grow up. Basically, I want to get into film. Um, but we just got cast roles for uh, the play that we're going to be doing uh, later in the semester. It's like the play for the school, and we're doing Alice in Wonderland. So Mad Hatter, you know, and Mad Hatter is actually uh, reciting 
one of, he was in here for a short amount of time. He was reciting, let me see if I can find it quickly. He was reciting. Let me see. Well, anyway, he was reciting something from Alice in Wonderland, one of the poems. He was actually in, he was reciting something that, uh, I'm sorry guys, I'm blanking, but he's reciting something that Tweedledee and Tweedledum say, because we, we just did a full read-through on the script today, so I really remember, like, everything that happened in the story. But, like, yeah, so he was rereading the the poem that Tweedledee and Tweedledum said in Alice in Wonderland. But, uh, yeah, I got cast for, uh, the, uh, the king, the king of hearts, so uh, that ought to be cool. Um, but yeah, definitely pick this up, like I said, mad good. See, even Christopher Nolan agrees. The Long Halloween is more than a comic book. It's an epic tragedy. And actually a lot of, uh, there were quite a few scenes in this that inspired scenes in The Dark Knight. Um, not really anything in, like, Rises or Batman Begins, but a lot of scenes from this were inspired in The Dark Knight, or a lot of scenes in The Dark Knight were inspired from this. Uh, so that was mad cool. Um, but yeah, just like I said, solid book. You guys should definitely pick this up, uh, pick up and read Batman Year One. That was also really good. Um, pick up uh, Batman Dark Victory, which is the story after this. I, I haven't read it yet, and from what I understand, it's good, but it's not as good as this because it doesn't really stand on its own. You have to have read this for it to make sense. Um, but yeah, this has to do with like a new character named Holiday, basically. Well, not new, because this is from the 90s. This was actually, this story arc was going on throughout 1996, which is when I was born. I was born in January. Uh, 1996, and this actually went on for that whole year, and then uh, one more month, uh, I believe. Or no, 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 no. It started on, it started in October of January, um, and then it went on one book a month for a year, and then one extra month. So, yeah. But like I said, mad good. Um, definitely should pick it up. So it's been a long time coming. Um, finally, my X-Force 3 pack is finally about to be complete because I finally got off my ass and actually worked on this guy and fixed him. Um, if you guys remember, the joint here was stuck in the all the way out position. I was able to fix it. Um, it was just kind of a little stuck. The joint's still a little bit tight, but I'm still just like moving it back and forth to get it looser. Um, shush, doggy. Sorry about that. Um, but as you guys also know, the peg had broken off inside the bicep. So I was able to get that out. Um, and when I did it, I accidentally drilled through into the bi into the elbow right there. But shush. It's, it's not too bad because I can just pop it out and in. And when it's in, it's pretty, it's pretty good in there. Um, but I was able to drill into here. Shush! Put a screw in there so then I could use that as an artificial peg. Um, and I had to end up cutting the screws apart. Like here's a, this is what the screw regularly is. And then that's the leftover of the one that I actually ended up using. Um, this was another failed one. Um, and I was actually using Banshee as a test. He got... He got shot in the leg, I guess. I was using it as a test to see how I could get the screw to work. Because last time I remember I tried using a screw for something in a plastic figure and it wouldn't work. Like it didn't actually screw, it just kind of made a hole. Um, so now I'll probably revisit that now that I kind of know what to do. But yeah, about to have this bad boy all secure. Um, the reason I haven't put this back on is because it's still a little bit warm from the, uh, uh, what's it called, the hair, the hair dryer, so I, I just want to let it cool off a bit, but, uh, yeah. Alright, so I just got a package, and inside that package was, uh, this, uh, DC Universe Classics, uh, Gotham City 5 pack, Catwoman, and that is a mouthful. Um, I got this, this female off of eBay for... Total out 18 after shipping. Um, thought it wasn't that bad. Um, that was, it was, damn it, Archangel fell. But, uh, it was, a uh, a bid, and I normally don't like to do bids. I normally just go for the buy it now, just because I think it's easier. I mean, you could get a better deal on bid, but I feel like if you have the money for buy it now, and, like, the price isn't too outrageous, then I usually just go for it. Um, but yeah, I got it for 18 bucks. I don't even really, I don't even really want her that much. I want the black version, um, and then I want to pop out the head for the uh, DC uh, 
DC Direct had Hush that had a sick how the goggles can slide up and down stuff like that. Um, but I'm thinking since that the regular figure goes for or the DC Superheroes black version goes for like 70 bucks, I'll probably just uh, grab a, grab up another one of her for like 20, and then uh, either do it myself or have a customizer paint her up. And maybe I could find someone to get a cast of that Catwoman head. Because, I mean, I wouldn't mind having it casted with the goggles permanently up. Because I would probably never put them down anyway. Um, but, yeah. This is a really dope figure. Um, it's got some articulation that the regular females don't have. And, actually, a lot of DCs you don't have. It's got the rotation in the foot. Like, Harley doesn't have it. Joker doesn't have it. Uh, Riddler doesn't have it. Bane's got it. Um... Really, not really, hardly anyone has it. Robin's got it. Um, but otherwise, I can't think of the figures that I have that have it otherwise. Um, and then she's also got the ankle pivot, which same goes for my uh, modern Batman that's in there. Um, but yeah, like I said, real nice figure. Came with the whip, I think. I don't know. This version wasn't supposed to come with the backpack, I don't think. Or the cat stature or whatever. But, uh, that would have been cool to get. But, um, yeah. Got my X-Force. Finally. Finally. After all this time. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I suppose I could have taken this picture the whole time. I'd actually planned on doing it ever since the three-pack came out. Um, and I was planning on putting in... X Force Wolvie. But then when he broke, I decided not to do it. And I've been wanting to do it since. But, but uh, I actually remember when this scene actually happened, Wolverine wasn't even in the costume. Um, he was actually wearing like these clothes exactly, just a a white uh, wife beater with uh, some jeans. And he's just pissed off at Cyclops talking about X Force. I remember Warpath was already in his costume. Um, <coughs> um, what's her name? Uh, Renee. She was already in her costume. And uh, I'm pretty sure X was already in her costume, X-23. But I'm not positive on that. Um, but I definitely know that uh, Renee and uh, Warpath were. I, mean, I remember him saying, he's like, if Warpath wants to join, that's his deal. And if Renee wants to join, I'm against it. But again, that's her decision. Um, but with X, she's my responsibility, so you can't just ask her. You have to ask me, basically. Um... So yeah, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, uh, this is part of the original X-Force run. Um, it's actually the very beginning, the very first issue of the original X-Force run. Well, not the original, but the original of the Strike Team um, series, which I'll, I guess I'll get into in a second. Just a quick little comment, we have to finish up the classic X-Force as well. Not to mention all the newer additions to the Uncanny X-Force and the, you know, and also Uncanny X-Force is about to get rebooted on Marvel Now. Um, the team's changing up. It's going to be Psylocke, Storm, um, who else? Some, like, girl version of Phantom X, and someone, some other guys or something like that. I don't remember. And then also there's going to be, uh, Cable and X-Force, which I'll probably also pick up, um, which the team is Cable, Colossus, Dr. Nemesis, um, and, like, two other people. Um, oh, Domino and then someone else, so I don't remember. But, uh, yeah, we need to finish up, like, every X-Force, basically. Except for the initial team of Uncanny. But, uh, yeah, you know. By the way, I'm on some Bug Nice shit. Doing some team meetings. <laughs> but, yeah. I'm happy that Havoc is getting a, a bigger part in Marvel. Um, I don't know if I talked about it at all, but, uh, I picked up Uncanny Avengers, uh, the first issue, and it was actually pretty decent. I, I kind of enjoyed it. Um, I'm not sure about the story arc parts particularly, but I like the writing, and I like the kind of stylization of it. Um, <coughs> I mean, the art is kind of basic, but it's pretty, pretty solid at the same time. Um, but yeah, Havoc has always been a cool character, in my opinion. Um, I always thought he was far cooler than... Uh, Cyclops, and I always kind of wondered why Cyclops kind of like stole the show. Um, I mean, I know now because he's just more of a natural leader than Havoc has ever been. Um, but we'll see how Havoc runs this team. Um, but yeah, Havoc's always been a cool character, and I don't know. I'm making a new intro. Um, it's definitely going to be 
featuring uh, this artist by the name of Adam Warrock. He has some uh, cool raps about, uh, he does hip hop. Um, he has like regular hip hop and then he's got stuff about like superheroes and shit like that and comic books. So I'm probably going to use his music for the intro. I'm not sure what song I'm going to pick yet, but uh, throughout this episode, whenever there are pictures, or I'll actually probably just have it playing in the background too. Um, I'll be having some of his shit go off from the his uh, X Factor EP, which was just like a five song EP that he did uh, based on the original X Factor run. <coughs> uh, <coughs> but uh, I'll be sure to have Havoc playing like around now because um, that song is probably one of my favorites off that uh, EP. Um, but yeah, definitely check him out. If you just Google Adam Warrock and you go to his site, it's like the first thing that pops up. You can download like basically all of his music free. Um, so yeah, he's, he's pretty good and he's got a lot of shit out. Um, but yeah. <laughs> 